Two years ago, I released the first chapter of my game Pixel Art Academy, where you are an art student deciding to go study at the Retropolis Academy of Art and you have to go through admission week where you show that you're committed to studying at the school and you learn how to draw with pixel art and create art for your first game. Now the chapter is feature complete, meaning you can do everything, but there is no art for locations except for the Retronator headquarters gallery. And so soon after the release, I went and started illustrating all the locations, starting with the apartment where your character wakes up at the start of the chapter. There is this uh, loft bedroom where you wake up. And since I'm using limited color palette and I wanted all the walls to be white, it was quite hard to figure out how exactly the geometry of the place looks like. And there are a couple of simple solutions to this. However, I didn't choose any of these solutions. Instead, I decided I am going to simulate how light really works. Right now, you are able to see me because the sun is shining right on top of my head you can even see the reflection right here and it's bouncing into the camera but what if i close the curtains why are you still able to see me now well some of the sun is still going through the narrow gap hitting the bed over there and bouncing back into my head back into the camera in fact, it is bouncing all over the room and all of the white walls that you can see. They're all being illuminated from this sliver of light coming through the curtain. In other words, what my scene needed to be readable is global illumination. Global illumination is an approach in computer graphics that captures exactly this bouncing of light, how everything affects everything. And I went on to implement a solution for my graphics engine, but there was this huge problem. My approach was painstakingly slow. Welcome to Pixel Art Academy 102, the second season of my YouTube series where I talk about the development of my game, Pixel Art Academy. Uh, now, the scene here is still rendering, and no, it didn't take two years, but it did take me two years to start optimizing this. Like I said in the previous episode, we started a school here in Sweden for game development, where I'm teaching art with the curriculum of Pixel Art Academy, but that also meant that my focus had to go away from building features of the game, like the graphics engine, and into writing learning materials, things you could actually learn with the game. And that's what I was talking about last time. And we are now in the second year with our school here. So it's time for me to go back into the graphics engine. Traditionally, graphics engines render the scene with the help of lights that are placed around the scene. These lights are defined geometrically. We have different types of light sources like direct light, spotlights, point lights, and all of these are calculated using mathematical equations depending on the direction they are coming from and the surface that they are reflecting from. This is all great for simulating direct light that is going directly from the light source to the surface and into the camera, but it doesn't really take into account multiple bounces. To account for bounced light, graphics engine usually have yet another light source, typically just called ambient light, which captures sort of the average light that is bouncing around the scene. However, the problem is this is an average that affects all surfaces equally, regardless of where they are facing or what kind of other objects there are close by. Bounced light gets heavily influenced by the color of the surface that the light is bouncing from, which makes sense because it is the same light that is hitting from the surface that makes us see that the surface is of a certain hue. 
the same light is then also bouncing into other objects which then get lit by that color before bouncing again towards our eyes. That means that for the graphics engine to know what kind of light is reflecting off of a surface into the camera, it really needs to know what kind of light is coming from all different directions from all around the scene to that surface. And if we then store this information about what light is reaching every pixel and we store it into a texture, we get a light map. And this technique has been around in video games at least since Quake. The only thing is this calculation, how much light is reaching a certain point, is done as a pre-processing step while the game is being built because it takes a really long, long, long time, just like it does in my first global illumination implementation. This might be okay if the lighting situation never changes, but in my game I want to have dynamic time of day or capture the effects of the character opening the doorway onto a lit hallway and that affecting and brightening up the dark surroundings. And I'm not the only one that feels this way. This is such an important fundamental of how light and rendering works it's no surprise that everyone in the real-time graphics engine field was working towards trying to get real-time global illumination calculations and during these two years while I was busy doing other things Unreal Engine 5 came out as the first big solution, big engine that has reached the point of having real-time global illumination with its Lumen lighting solution. Even with Lumen we're still pretty far from a generic solution that works perfectly so there's a lot of trickery going on and use cases where the limitations uh, are more apparent than others. Lumen goes with ray tracing either hardware or software with signed fields but I'm trying to run my thing in the browser without ray tracing so I am just reusing the solution I already made to rasterize the whole scene from each pixel except now I'm doing it in a hierarchical way I first render the scene from its most significant pixel, usually closest to the center, and the light that that pixel receives is just applied to the whole cluster, as if the whole thing was receiving the same amount of light. In the next part, I split the whole area into four quadrants, and this continues with splitting each quadrant into four more quadrants. I do this with a limited amount of steps, which produce a more and more progressively detailed light map. But I'm not displaying the light map as it is rendered like this directly, because I have chosen my light map areas to fall nicely into sizes the power of 2. I can use MIP mapping to automatically generate blurred version of the light map. So by using a higher level of a light map, I actually get a smooth gradient across the whole cluster. In the end, I might not even be using this smoothed gradient, but actually just a uniform color across the whole cluster, because that more matches with the art style that I'm usually going for in my mockups. So now let's see how the light map performs in practice. The light is now nicely filling up the room and we can go to a more 
afternoon look. It should be being lit more and more just from the blue sky. We can increase the exposure a bit. We can see we're getting more blue colors. And then back to more perhaps an evening scene. Some more light hitting in. I can try the uniform colors across the whole cluster as well. See if I like those. I do think I will also include some screen space, ambient occlusion to include some shadowing on the edges themselves. Uh, also these kind of bugs on the edges have to do with the way I'm doing shadows right now. Those will all be corrected and ironed out as I work more on this engine. Yeah, it's not exactly as convergent and impressive as Lumen, but you know, it runs in the browser and uh, I wrote it as a single person. Here is a new location I've been working on. This is when the character comes down the stairs into the living room. And these kind of dynamic lighting situations like here when you get uh, shadows thrown over other items. This is really what drives me to use this kind of an engine. If we look at how this scene would look like without the light map, this is it. You can see how, yes, the room is just being, in this case, lit by the sky dome, but yeah, it's lacking the interaction between the floor, which really gets nicely captured with the light map being in place. I'm quite happy with the results so far. It'll probably need some more fine tuning when I actually using it properly on locations, but I think it's good for now. It's really fun to play around with this, so I think some parts of my art style are actually going to come out of just experimentation, seeing what works best for me when I'm playing around with it. Next up, I need to add support also for surface reflections because the light map is averaging light from all directions, but for surface reflections it really matters what direction the light is coming from, so you can see different things depending on where you look. So there will need to be separate support added for highly reflective objects and especially for flat mirrors like this walk-in closet here in the bedroom. That's it for this time. I wish I was able to record this episode in a little bit better circumstances because as all of you know right now there's a lot of wrong things happening outside in the world so I just want to say to all Ukrainians I wish you strength and I hope next time we speak things will be more normal again. Until then, I wish you all the best. Stay safe out there and I'll see you next time. All right. Bye.